Oh, there we go. There we go. Yeah. I was cooking something and then it wasn't quite ready. So that's why we're late. I wasn't trying to be suspenseful. Wasn't playing games, just the food was still frozen in the center. Hey, Jinx. Hey, Sly. What's going on? Hey, Jeffrey Corley. What is up? Just letting people know we're on. Yeah, so I'm just inviting some people to join us. Yeah, but how's everyone doing, man? Happy Thanksgiving. What am I cooking, Vicky, Alex? Um, I'm back on my vegetarian stuff. I was a vegetarian for a while, and then I uh, stopped. But that quarantine weight was killing me, man. I was putting on some serious quarantine weight. So I'm like, I got to shock my system and get out of this like too many burgers and stuff like that so yeah i was just making some vegetarian food i um as soon as i went back on vegetarian i started uh, losing weight again so that's good yeah man but woof, i was just eating like burgers and fried chicken and got, like all that anxiety i was just anxiety eating jeffrey corley said um 25 pounds i think i went to i gained 32 pounds i mean i'm tall but still and then um i've lost about seven since uh switched back to vegetarian and that's only like in a week and change so yeah yeah P plus the heavy meats diets get harder to process as you age yep <laughs> alicia grifta <laughs> hey stephanie b how's it going yeah man and we should grift that. That's what we're going to talk about for a second. But uh, share with people. Let them know we're up here. Let me um, tell people in various places that we are here. I um, I planned this last second, so I don't know if anyone's going to join us. I just told the guys in the chat if they want to. Yeah, well, hold, hold on. Let's see. Let me just let people know that we are up in here. Some people on the Discord were up in here. Just going to make a couple of quick announcements and then we'll be on our way. yeah happy thanksgiving to everybody hope you're all doing good hope everyone is staying out of trouble okay all right and last thing Whew. You know, even on Thanksgiving, I just went on to Twitter. I've been on Twitter less these days for my sanity. Um, but even on Thanksgiving, people are still people are still gender warring, man. Black people on Twitter are addicted to gender warring. It's crazy. It's Thanksgiving, man. Just prep your food. Like, <laughs> what are y'all doing? It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. So I'm just uh, letting people know that we're on here. We're that we're live talking about BLM and friends still coordinating against Ice Cube and we we'll talk about Obama on the Breakfast Club.
retweet and share on your social medias. Yes. Okay. All right. So, yeah, yeah. So, um, I want to show you all something real quick, man. It's, it's a little bit crazy to me, but I think a lot of these blue checks and stuff, they coordinate like crazy with each other. I don't know if it's just a giant group DM. I don't know if they're getting their marching orders from other people, you know, but I want to show you all something real quick. Uh, somebody put this up. I had noticed it for a while. Yeah, someone said at least the diaspora wars have subsided for now. That's good to know. Like, what I've been doing is, what I've been doing lately is I just go on to Twitter. I do, like, a thread if I feel like I want to um, workshop an idea. Or I ask a question if I need a question on something like, hey, how do you do this? You know, and then... I just try to log back out. I try not to get sucked into, you know, whatever nonsense is happening. Like, but uh, I made the mistake yesterday. I got sucked into like uh, an argument and then I was like, why did I do this for? But so basically because I'm just hopping on for a little bit, saying what I got to say and hopping off, I don't really know exactly everything that's happening but a couple of things i did see um people are gender warring as usual like day in day out like people just wake up on christmas they're gonna wake up and uh go on just talking about bitches and shit niggas and shit you know i know that's gonna happen i saw alicia garza talking nonsense um hey hirotsu how's it going yeah, I think sometimes they get their marching orders from above. Hit the damn like button. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, they keep pulling me back in. I mean, I can't lie. It's a great place to get news. So I still keep going back in. Like, for example, um, to know what kind of nonsense media people are doing, that's pretty much the best place uh, to go. And that's where I found out about today's nonsense. But uh the main thing is you just can't let yourself get sucked into the arguments. That's when you that's when you lose. That's exactly when you lose. Uh, but this is what I wanted to show real quick. Um, this is a good term. I like this term. It said micro influencers. It's a good term until we think of a better term. You know, because for example. I remember before the term influencer is caught on, um, writers on social phenomenon use the term micro celebrities. And eventually the term was replaced by influencers, which I think is a, is a good term. But micro celebrities was a good placeholder. And this guy said micro influencers, and I like that term. But I think it should be a placeholder. I think we should have a separate word a special word for micro influencers because I think they're a real thing. Like people who on their own, um, one thing I started calling some micro influencers, I started using this term, um, wanna checks, kind of like wannabes, like people who don't technically have a blue check, but tweet and act the same as blue checks and all the same stupid arguments and all the same ass kissing, you know, like they're, getting ready for the day they become a blue check like they're already behaving like them they carry water for the blue checks they make excuses for them they tweet like them um someone said nano influencers but nano influencers are the same as micro influencers like like i don't want it to be a modifier or something else like i think it should just have its own uh unique name eventually kind of like how instead of some constant micro celebrities you know like I, I like things better with their own uh total total name no just call them the black bourgeoisie that's too broad because there's people who are the black bourgeoisie who are not even on social media like this is this that's too that's too broad black influ black bourgeoisie there's no way that can just describe micro influencers that could be anybody and some of these micro influencers some of them are in bourgeoisie some of them are just you know you got people in the hood who are like uh yeah, yeah, boules is something different too. That's 
that's a class thing. We're talking about something. Hey, Vita, how's it going? Yeah, yeah. So, anyway, this is what um, he said, and I thought it was good. Uh, thanks for the donation, Vita. Yeah, by all means, take um, take the cue. Uh, if you enjoy, I'm glad this reminded me to do the house cleaning. If you enjoy, well, let me start over. We, as usual, are trying to offer a humble service of entertaining you and providing you information and analysis that you normally, we feel, are unable to get elsewhere. So there's no charge for this. There's no fee. But we humbly beseech you, if you enjoy the perspective that we bring and the receipts that we bring and what we bring to the table, by all means, feel free to donate to the show. Uh, you can donate to us through Super Chat. And the super stickers, which you can see in the live chat on the side with the dollar sign, or you can, people who don't have it set up like that, you can go to Venmo or Cash App, Champagne Sharks, or you can go to Champagne Sharks at gmail.com for PayPal. So PayPal is Champagne Sharks at gmail.com. Venmo or Cash App is Champagne Sharks. So, yeah. Those are your options, and yeah, keep that in mind throughout the show. If you enjoy the perspective we bring, then feel free to donate. Now, oh yeah, man, I'm trying. I'm trying to, man. That's 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 good. That's what I'm going for. Uh, oh yeah. By the way, Vita says, uh, watch the adverse childhood experiences study lecture on ted talk for next week that's y'all's homework and um yeah check that out she's gonna talk about it in her next uh trauma show yeah a lot of people like a lot of people like the uh trauma show so yeah that's that's pretty good someone said comprador bourgeoisie so uh anyway i'm gonna put this up they said Micro influencers are already preempting the failure of Biden and his administration to do anything for ADOS and gearing up for midterms. April Ryan, Roland Martin, Dr. Avis, and BET News all came up with the mostly identical messages at the same time. Coincidence? I think not. I don't really agree with the preempting the failures of Biden and his administration doing anything. I don't think they've decided yet. For example, if Biden refuses to meet with BLM, then for sure, they're definitely going to say he did terrible. Like, I think if anything, they won't carry water for him. They'll try to say, oh, he was bad for black people. It's because he didn't meet with us. If he ends up meeting with them, then they're going to be like, yeah, he was great for black people, even if he doesn't do crap. But um. I've talked about in the past. And I don't want to retread too much water. You've seen the past live streams. Look at them if you haven't. But we've talked about how BLM has just been shilling on spec. They've been shilling with no contract. They've been doing PR and carrying the water. Um, but they were doing it too late. They were doing it after all the horses they bet on fell through. And Biden got the nomination with no help from them. If anything, a lot of them were actively going against Biden. And then they were trying to hop on the bandwagon and uh, hop on the band, the Biden bandwagon, but also act like they were leading his um, black mobilization charge, which they weren't. Uh, Clyburn and others did that. Um the ghost of Obama's fumes did that for him. He, they had nothing to do with it. But anyway, we also talked about, uh, again, I don't want to retread too much water from the past, but we talked about, and we've shown in the past multiple live streams of how they've been doing everything they can to ensure that they get in with whoever's in the next administration, but they were unprepared for Biden getting in. So they didn't sow any seeds for that. And, it's understandable because that there was a time where Biden was like fifth or sixth. Like they went months without talking about him during the campaign. Budijek and Klobuchar were all doing better than him. 
So, I mean, it was reasonable to write him off. It wasn't until Obama and company uh, finagled after South Carolina when people were kind of blindsided by his black support. They changed things around and got everyone else out the paint. And these people were not ready because like people like Simone Sanders, who were working for Biden, they were lucky they got in early, you know, and she had to stick with Biden because he gave her a job up front, you know, so she got lucky. She's probably gonna get a job. But a lot of these other ones, they put all their chips on Elizabeth Warren and others. And some people even put their chips in with Bloomberg, like Stacey Abrams, you know, so he this is what the problem is. Uh, Alicia Garza, from the moment that he was announced, did that Washington Post um, op ed and video trying to get in, was appearing on Joy Reid trying to get in. We showed how Roland Martin has been trying to appeal to Biden, but you know, too little, too late. As recently as last week, Patrice, Patrice Colors is still sending open letters. They're trying to circulate petitions to get people to shame Joe Biden to meeting them. And it's funny, like a freaking petition, like that's how low access uh, they are right now. And it's kind of scaring them, you know, um, but anyway, all these people, this is what I think they're trying to do right now. Right. What I think they're trying to do is this. What they're trying to do is get one of them in there. If we get one of them, if we get one of us in there, they're going to leave the back door of Master's house open and we can all get in the back and eat the leftovers. You know, like while everyone's eating, you know, you get in there, let the door open, then, you know, a bunch of us will come in the back and we'll we'll all eat. You know what it's like? It's like Parasite. You seen the Korean movie Parasite? One of them got in that house and they kept trying to bring in, you know, the rest of the uh, family of parasites, of, of, of moochers and leeches. But their problem was there was already another group of parasites that staked the house out. You know, there, there was a couple in there that were there first. And that's the problem. Biden's got his own resident uh, group in there. And I shall show you something real quick. I think this is I think this is relevant. Politico had this story. We're going to go back to that tweet, but this is actually more relevant. This was a great story. Politico had this story a couple days ago. Transition 2020. People are pissed. Tensions rise amid scramble for Biden jobs. Veterans of the Democratic primary campaign fear they're being squeezed out of plum posts by later arrivals. And yeah, in in late 2008, during the transition from George W. Bush to Barack Obama, there was a mantra that took hold among Washington insiders. Obama won the election, but Hillary won the transition. The most loyal denizens of the Obama campaign, the people who were with them from Springfield to Grant Park, watched with deep trepidation as the Obama administration was staffed at the highest levels with the same Clintonites, including Hillary herself, that they thought they had vanquished in the Democratic primaries the previous summer. It's still early in the Biden transi transition. There are thousands of jobs to fill, but a similar sense of dread is starting to bubble up from the veterans of the Biden campaign, particularly those who were there with the president-elect from the Philadelphia announcement speech to the Wilmington victory speech. The target of their ire? The Obama establishment, which has eclipsed the Clinton name as shorthand for yesterday's Democratic Party. So basically, a lot of Obama insiders are getting jobs. Now, this is what's interesting here, right? If people who are actually with Obama from day one are getting blindsided. People who are with Biden from day one are getting blindsided for old school pedigreed Obama types and Ivy Leaguers and stuff like that. 
then what about the people who weren't even working for Biden, who were shilling on spec, like I said before? You got to think about that. If you're somebody, if people who are actually in Biden's corner from the beginning are getting passed over for like old school, super pedigreed Obama uh, people, then people who hopped on this like February 2020 or, or whenever it was, I forget exactly, I think it might have been April, what it, whenever it was that um, everyone else dropped out and Biden was the candidate and they had to scramble and, you know, they didn't get contacted at all. Like, picture out people who have been trying to petition and campaign to get Biden's ear and haven't been responded to yet. Like, to use Black Lives Matter as the example, they have said to anyone who listened that Biden is straight up, like, not answering their calls. He's just, like, uh, not even ghosting them. Because even ghosting, you got to talk to somebody at some point. Then they stop. Like, they're not even... They can't even get the number. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we got 84 people up in here total. Let's see if we can get some more people. Share, share on your social medias. Let people know we're up in here. Let's see if we can break 100 people total across all platforms. Yeah, but anyway, going back to this article. It's still early in the transition. Is uh, the the Obama staffers are now cutting out the people who got Biden elected? Said a senior Biden official, channeling the feelings of the old guard of the Biden campaign, who requested anonymity for the obvious reasons. None of these people found the courage to help the VP when he was running, and that's very true. Obama did not uh, want to stand on the square until it was guaranteed that Biden had it. You know which is, you know, that's what influencers do. Influencers are not leaders, they're followers. So, you know, he didn't want to put his name on anything that wasn't guaranteed to already be trending and hot, you know. That's the last thing you want as an influencer to stake your cultural capital and your social capital on something that flops and betray that you lack, you know, real influence because that's your currency. So you can only um, bet on short things, right? So he says, um, none of these people found the courage to help the VP when he was running, and now they are elevating their friends over the Biden people. It's effed up, you know, and that's what these people do. They hook each other up. It's cronyism. Another Biden advisor who worked in the campaign echoed the point. It's a very valid criticism, the advisor said. A lot of people are living in uncertainty. Um, let's jump forward. Today, the conventional wisdom is that Biden is actually stalking his administration with his campaign loyalists at the expansion of other factions within his party. And in one sense, that's true. The top of that campaign, Ron Klain, Mike Donalal, and Steve Ricciotti will move into the top slots of the Biden White House. Biden's two top national security advisors on the campaign will take over the top national security jobs in the administration. Tony Blinken as Secretary of State and Jake Sullivan as National Security Advisor. The campaign manager, General Malley Dillon, and one of the campaign co-chairs, Rep. Cedric Richmond, will have senior White House roles. The relatively uncontroversial nature of these picks has been by design. Internally, Biden officials have been instructed to emphasize to reporters how normal the picks they are, how, quote, these are tested leaders, end quote. It's seen as a success if the Biden staff and cabinet announcements don't make much news. But just below that elite level, there is concern bordering on panic. So to make clear, to contextualize what we've been saying so far, at the very top, they put campaign loyalists who have been with the campaign from the beginning. The reason why they do that is so that things look business as normal. Like, hey, business as usual. We're, you know, putting people who've been with us from the beginning, nothing to be alarmed about, whatever. But they're actually be just below that top level. It's kind of anything goes fair game. And they're going for old school Obama people and people that they were friends with or whatever or cronies who 
um, it didn't actually help in the beginning. They only hopped in at the end. But sometimes that happens. Sometimes people take you for granted and you support for granted and uh, focus on the people who weren't a sure thing and get more into making sure that they pay off the people that they feel that um, they can't take for granted, the people who aren't sure things. So it's uh, that's kind of what, hey, Isaac K, what's going on? Yeah, so that's kind of um, what has happened. So yeah, the pod save guys, you know, will probably be in there at some point. Uh, I'm sure they're going to show up and people like that. Although, I guess they don't really need it because they're making so much money with that pod save stuff. But, but we'll see. So he says, um, just below that elite level, there is concern bordering on panic, depending on who you talk to, about the perceived lack of outreach to many campaign alumni. Quote, there's real doubt about whether they will be taken care of, end quote, said the Biden advance advisor. Some of the grumbling dates back to one of the main divides in the Biden campaign. People who joined the campaign before Dylan was named campaign manager in March and those who came in after. Some of the old guard feel they were unappreciated, underappreciated. They won the Democratic nomination and were layered over by Dylan hires who are now being prioritized for White House jobs. And I had a job like that once. I had a job where um, I was brought in by one person who was doing the hiring. Then that person left and the other supervisor brought in their old people their own people. And those are the people they liked. I wasn't one of the people that they liked. And those people were safe. So I, I kind of understand that feeling. I've been in that situation in in a job where uh, there wasn't much I was going to do that was going to, uh, even though I was there first, that was going to put me ever above these people. Yeah, because the people who brought me in were gone. Um, Several people I talked to pointed out that both Dylan and Julie Rodriguez, one of her campaign deputies, received high-profile positions in the White House before people like Kate Bedingfield and Simone Sanders, both of whom were, were hired before um, Dylan, two prominent veterans from the pre-Dylan era who are still widely seen as likely to receive top communications job. And I agree with that. I'm very doubtful Simone Sanders isn't going to get a job, but it's still kind of disrespectful to prioritize Dylan's people before her, you know? People who were not part of winning the hard-fought primary were placed before people who were part of that, said the Biden advisor. If you notice, Jen's people are being taken care of. So if Jen Dylan's people, uh, Jen Dylan being the person who was brought on campaign advisor later in the campaign, are being taken care of before the pre-Dylan people, the people who were even more loyal and uh, and there even before Dylan, what chance are these new social justice influencer grifters going to have to get in there? I think it's slim. Nothing's impossible. Maybe at the very end, the shaming will get so bad that they might just throw them a bone eventually. But, I mean, I doubt they have any pull with Jen Dillon, the uh, campaign advisor who has been um, taken care of in the cabinet, right? And and now the senior White House role, and then her cronies, then they have no sway, I don't think, with Simone Sanders. I don't really think Simone Sanders really rocks with them like that, especially because I'm sure Simone Sanders would have appreciated their help at first when they needed those people, you know, but Black Lives Matter and all those people, they were messing with Warren and all these other people. So I, I got a feeling they don't really mess with Simone Sanders like that, or at the very least, Simone Sanders probably doesn't really feel particularly indebted to them. Um, who knows? Maybe she'll feel like if she gets them in there with him, they'll be valuable allies later. I don't know. But I'm doing this to kind of show you exactly what is going on behind the scenes. Because I feel like Politico and The Hill tend, tend to be more honest. Whereas a lot of places like Washington Post and those places are a lot of the people who write there are part of this um, 
Well, let me back it up a second. If you were to look at a lot of the people in mainstream legacy media, a lot of them have that Twitter blue check influencer click thing where they're liberals and they show for liberals. But what they talk about is not always what the actual Democratic Party cares about. Right. So to give an example, they were in the tank for Hillary so bad. If you go by the media and influencer class, if you look at what the DNC was doing, they were setting up Donna Brazil and a bunch of other people to shit on Hillary Clinton and make her look bad. If you think Donna Brazil went rogue when she was saying all this stuff about Hillary, no way, because she kept working with the DNC. They wouldn't have kept her on and given her jobs if she wasn't following their marching orders, you know? And a lot of times they have their own agendas that have nothing to do with what the actual liberals in power, the Democrats, are doing. So if you read Washington Post and a lot of these different news sites, you'll think it's all about Black Lives Matter, that everything, and um, Joe Biden's obligated to meet with them, and they're likely to be met with. And if he's not talking to them, then he's not taking care of black issues, you know, because a lot of those people are cool. Black Lives Matter. A lot of those people are part of the academia, media, um, social justice influencer grifter complex of blue checks, you know, where they all kind of have that mutual boosterism and give each other jobs and cover each other and hang out with each other and hope to help each other's career fluidity. Like, you know, you'll give me access to the White House. Uh, I'll help you get your op-eds get published where I work. If one of us gets to be in a writer's room for an HBO uh, trauma porn show about black people, I'll try to get you into the writer's room too and whatever, you, you know. But places like The Hill and Politico, like, those are like real politics nerds. They don't really care about that game of patronage and um, blue check um reach arounds they tend to be more um objective and actually talking about what the real deal is that's why i like this article it'll give you it'll give you a real idea about what is happening with all these things so that's why if you notice if you try to follow the news by looking at cnn or following twitter you won't really see this story that i'm reading now um to, to, so anyway, let's finish up real quick. Um, in response to these criticisms, Biden transition official who asked to remain anonymous because they were concerned that the Biden campaign officials speaking out might focus their frustrations toward me, uh, said in the prepared statement, the Biden-Harris transition team includes many longtime campaign staff working alongside transition staff who have been laying the groundwork for a smooth transition for months. It is still extremely early in the process of staffing the Biden-Harris administration, and the people who put in the hard work to win will continue to be an integral part of the work of the work moving forward. You know, typical corporate speak. Um, They end with this final two paragraphs. I'm going to jump ahead. In the meantime, many of these people are sitting around and waiting, often without any real understanding of how they even apply for crucial jobs. So even people in the campaign, they don't even know how to even apply for crucial jobs, right? People are pissed at the Biden advisor. I think I'm going to be taken care of, but I have not been taken care of yet. I am really interested to find out how you even find out how you get a job in this White House. So given this, and, you know, like Alicia Garza said, remember Alicia Garza said to Ice Cube when they were on Roland Martin, and she got mad at him for skipping the line? Even And Ice Cube was like, what line? There's, I don't acknowledge your line. That's what BLM is trying to do, ironically, right now. There's a line that they're trying to skip, and the people on the line already don't even know if they're in the right line. Like, the people working on the campaign from day one don't even know who to talk to. So do you think with Biden trying to put out these fires and trying to get these people to stop leaking to the press 
and get them all taken care of. Do you think meeting with Black Lives Matter is a priority for him right now? Do you think he's going to tell his people, hey, we're going to meet with Black Lives Matter and see where we can fit them in into this administration? Like, how do you think that's going to go? You tell me. How do you think that's going to go? And this is like common sense. So I don't even know why these people, like, I'm very surprised by the desperation and naivete of, like, a lot of people have been like, talking about ice cube they're like oh ice cube did biden like agree to meet you yet and stuff and it's like of of course he hasn't he's still trying to figure out how to even slot the peep his day ones you know and but i do think he'll more likely meet with the ice cube for a meeting with alicia garza i think i'll say that um biden never lied about his role Nothing will fundamentally change. Yep, yep, yep. Um, yeah, Harris is bringing in her husband. That that much I know. Uh, he already has a job, but um, yeah. So it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. Um, I feel like the word grift is getting like overused someone said lobbying is grifting no I mean, lobbying is unethical but i feel like grifting is grifting is like simp i feel like grifting is um just losing all all meaning yeah they're definitely playing up kamala harris's role because they want to pacify you know the diversity crowd but also i think she might have people kind of realize that a biden vice president is very likely to possibly become president more than like say a Dan Quayle or a lot of other people or even like an Al Gore because I mean people are pretending otherwise but I mean Joe Biden is you know very much sundowning I'm I'm I maintain that he is sundowning and I don't think that's a controversial thing to say but All that was to contextualize what we were talking before. So let us get back to this. This is what they're doing now. April Ryan um, comes out and says, and April Ryan, I think she's worked at CNN. She's been on this um, mainstream pundit class for a while. I think she might have had a show for a second with Angela Rye and um, Gillum, or they were talking about having to have a show Angela Rye and um, Andrew Gillum. I mean, I don't think it's happening anytime soon, but uh, she puts, and this is what I mean about like the legacy media crowd, the CNNs, the Huffington Post, the Salons, the Washington Post, and even like the New York Times. A lot of these um, writers they have there, especially like these um, people of color and female ones, they're like very influence or agenda driven and it even um goes into the reporting i'll give another example later that's pretty embarrassing but if you notice if you listen to them talk it's a whole different narrative they're not talking about what's actually really happening that's important like what is that who is he actually hiring like if you listen to champagne sharks we've told you who he's been hiring what he's been doing and not to toot our own horn you know but to toot beep beep we've like everything we've talked about, I think has come to fruition. And I don't think that's um, exaggeration or whatever to say, like everything that we've called or every analysis that we had about who has what access and what's going to happen so far, we've been uh, pretty, we've been pretty right. Right. And, but if you listen to the actual people whose job it is to do media, you would get a totally different narrative that's detached from reality. You know, and they're still acting like this is about Ice Cube versus Alicia Garza and Black Lives Matter and stuff. Biden's not even thinking about either of these people. But I do think he's probably more likely to think about Ice Cube before he thinks about them. Right. Um, So April Ryan says activist Alicia Garza says she's heard nothing from Ice Cube after he agreed to work with her on a black agenda. This is the entitlement, right? Um, 
activist Alicia, this is what Roland Martin said. Activist Alicia Garza says she's heard nothing from Ice Cube after he agreed to work with her on a black agenda. Notice the similar wording. Next, BT News, you have to make sure that you are bringing people with you, that you are consulting and collaborating with people. Um, you know, in relation to now, why is he obligated to bring her on? And who's to say that because he's not bringing her on, he's not consulting and collaborating with people like the audacity, like I'll say something else. What has black lives matter? And I've said this on to several people who, uh, were arguing with me about this. And I said, they're like, you know, he needs, if he wants to show he's serious, he needs to bring her on. And I said, what? has black lives matter accomplished that he needs to bring her on that bringing them on shows that he's serious what have they done that ice cube hasn't done and people can't really talk say anything they'll bring up stuff but it's stuff that they have nothing to do with they'll be like oh the minneapolis police department got defunded someone tried to tell me that they have nothing to do with that like people say black lives matter at all these protests as a slogan, but these people don't organize um, these protests. These people had moved on to different hustles, you know, trying to be feminists, trying to be screenwriters, trying to be X, Y, and Z. And they came back, you know, hat in hand when um, the George Floyd thing popped up and, and Biden won, and suddenly they want to be Black Lives Matter again. Like I showed last stream, Patrice Kalora was saying, I'm tired of being the Black Lives Matter girl. Then when that, when, when uh, COVID was drying up um, those TV show productions, so I'm sure her shows that she was uh, in the writer's room for uh, had a lot of downtime. You know, I'm sure Good Trouble's not uh, doing much right now. Suddenly she's like, hey, it's me, the Black Lives Matter girl again. Invite me to the White House. I'm not tired of being the Black Lives Matter girl after all, you know, but what have they actually accomplished? Like, what tangible thing did they accomplish besides building up their own names and being able to star in a bunch of stuff? Anything to do with Black people done by white media, they get invited to pontificate on. Like, all they've done is build up their own names. That's what influencers do. Influencers, they leave you holding the bag and their main goal in any of their projects, because their projects are content, not works, um, all that gets left is really they outshine the content. See, content builds up a personality. So when people, like, and one thing about personalities, personalities always want something. Personalities aren't real. Personalities are image and optics, and personalities exist for the, purpose of serving personalities and getting personalities out there uh personalities are masks personalities are constructs you know artists create works that they hope outlive them personalities create content that they hope to outlive that they believe exists to serve their popularity and their image and that's what black Latin matter has done they have made themselves household names, but they haven't actually accomplished anything. I don't think they even have a real tangible agenda. All they've ever talked about in this whole run-up to Biden winning is meeting with Biden, that he has to meet with them and put them on. That's all they ever talked to Ice Cube about. Ice Cube had that contract with Black America with a bunch of stuff in it that he wanted done. Whether you agree with it or not, it was tangible, right? And he went to Roland Martin, and he was bringing up that stuff. When Alicia Garza went on Roland Martin with Ice Cube, all she could bring up was, bring me with you, bring me with you. Even now, she has not talked to Biden or Ice Cube about her ideas. All she can talk about is, who's going to meet with me? Who's going to bring me on? And I'm going to say something else. Alicia Garza and Patrice Colors, Patrice Colors have been trying and petitioning to anyone who listened to the point where they resorted to open letters in the press and begging people to sign petitions or start petitions that they hope Biden will uh, see in any of that stuff. Did they mention ice cube? Did any of them mention ice cube in any of this? Cause I have not seen them mention ice cube at all. 
So why do they think Ice Cube is obligated to big them up and bring them on? First off, Ice Cube hasn't shown that he's been contacted by Biden either, but I think they kind of see the right in the wall that he has a better chance. And plus, they're desperate. So he did get talked to by Biden at some point. And as we've discovered, as I guessed and predicted and was proven right, um, again, not to toot my own horn, but beep, beep, the... I predicted that. I said, I don't think Biden's talking to them. I don't think they can even get their calls answered or they can't even get basic acknowledgement, which Patrice Coolores did say in an article a couple of days ago when we streamed about it. You know, so Ice Cube at least got that. So he's a good bet. They're covering every single angle and they're returning to the Ice Cube thing now because that's the other thing. And you might think, why is Roland Martin? Uh, focusing on this instead of real political reporting. Why is April Ryan talking about this? Why is BT News? And it's because it's the influencer mafia. It's the social justice influencer mafia. They And that's what the mafia does. The mafia knows if we can get one person into any institution, if we can get one of our guys into a construction site, if we can get one of our guys into a store, onto a board, onto anything, he's going to bring all the rest of us in to wet our beak. And that's what they're hoping for. They're, they're not, because they're content creators too. All these uh, so-called journalists and whatever, they're personalities. And their main thing is how do we come out of this, no matter what happens, how do we come out of this with bigger name recognition and than, we can, than we came in with? And so that's all they're concerned about right now is with this Biden thing. It's not what happens to black people. It's not what's, it's not good political analysis. It's these stupid career games and striving and careerism. So, um, I don't think it's even about getting rich. I think these people would choose, like Kenny always says, they choose a million retweets over a million dollars. So, so, yeah, I mean, I think the paycheck is not even that. Like, our podcast has been getting big enough, right? It's not huge. I'm not going to lie to you. Podcast isn't huge. Not as huge as I think it deserves. But it's been getting big enough that we've started getting, like, um, invitations to show for stuff. And, you know, like, from internet marketing agencies and PR things and, you know, like for major movies, like, do you want to do this movie giveaway and stuff like that? I'm the kind of person, I'm not against um, promoting something um, for money or taking advertising. If it's something that I genuinely believe in, but, you know, these are like mainstream blockbuster movies that I'm like, I haven't seen this movie. Um, I don't. One of them was... um, that movie Tenant with Christopher by Christopher Nolan. I'm like, I don't like Christopher Nolan movies. You know, I don't really uh, have an interest, but what was interesting to me about these different offers, they don't offer you anything to do this stuff. And I'm like, I wonder if this is like the normal deal, but yeah, I mean, they want you to shell just for, you know, the opportunity to get like some free swag or, the clout that you'll get from being able to say, Hey, we got this official movie giveaway. We're giving away DVDs, you know, and like they didn't offer me any money for any of it, you know? And I got feeling it's a case where a lot of these YouTube shill channels or all these people, like, like they do it for grab bags. They do it for swag bags. And because they're like star fuckers, because they're desperate to be famous and be around famous people, they do it for the chance to say they're important. They do it for the gram so they can take pictures at like special media events and stuff like that. So I don't think these people, I don't think a lot of these people really do things for a paycheck. I think they kind of think if I get famous enough, the paycheck is going to come. But I think if they had to choose between the paycheck or the fame, um, I think like ideally they'd want both. And they hope that if they get known enough, uh, somehow it's going to turn into money, even though they haven't figured out how, as long as they keep the clout going, uh, the money's going to come. But if they can only get one, I think they'd rather have the clout. That's my, that's my uh, personal 
yeah, a lot of them are basic basic groupies. Yeah. This is a good point. Maybe they're just testing the waters to see if I'm the right personality. Maybe the actual paid opportunities to show will come later, you know, once I show, once I make my bones to keep the mafia thing going, my own. You know, I'm, I make my bones by shilling for free or shilling on spec, like what um, Black Lives Matter is trying to do with Biden uh, during his run, you know, just show for free, just act like you're hired. But people don't know what on spec is. On spec is when you don't work for a show. You can't get an in with the show, so you can't get interviewed or hired. But what you do is you write for free episodes of the show that no one asks you to write, and you send it to people blind, or you know maybe someone you know can get the the script in front of people. And by doing this um, script that no one asked for, you're taking a risk. You're like you know no one paid me. If I if this doesn't work, then I've done I've given away free labor for nothing that no one even wants. But my hope is by doing it for free, I might impress the right people and they might like the final product and I'll get in. That's the kind of shilling that a lot of these people have been trying to do for Biden at the last minute. They're like, yo, Biden wouldn't even contact us and let us shill for him. But what choice do we have? Let's just shill anyway and then hope that our shilling is so good. Like our shilling on spec is so good that um, they retroactively give us the job and they're too busy. They're, they're not do doing that. But I guarantee you, if despite the promise and notice they made Ice Cube promise on Roland Martin's show that he's going to work with them. And he kept talking about giving us your platform, but she didn't say anything about, you know, whichever one of us gets in there first. Will lift the other one up. She didn't offer him anything. She just acted like she was entitled to the whole shebang. Super arrogant. Uh, I have no doubt that if they got a meeting with um, Biden and an Ice Cube said, hey, so are we working together or what? They'd be like, new phone, who this? They would not even pick up. Forget new, new phone, who this? They would ghost him in a second. And that's the thing. They think because a lot of these people, they can kind of shake down and whatever, especially like these millennials and Gen Z people. Like Ice Cube's old school. He's Gen X. He's from um, L.A. He's from old school hip hop. He's not made on the Internet. He doesn't care. They can't shake him down. They can't guilt him. What does he care? He sees them for what they are. You think it's been in you think it's been in Hollywood this long and doesn't Do you know the caliber of grifter? and hanger on and user they have in hollywood you think he has a hollywood production company and a hollywood career and he is going to fall for their level of grifting i mean we're showing like this thing's revealing how low level they're just flying by the seat of their pants they're just using the only tool they have which is internet clout and it's a limited tool with limited ability they're running into like this is one of those things. There's a saying that they say sometimes. I was told this many times. It's great advice. What got you here will not always get you there. And you have to realize when what got you here isn't going to get you there. Because what happens is a lot of people, because something was working, they can't recognize or readjust or pivot or change strategies when it's not working anymore you know and the, even worse a lot of times they've developed no al alternative strategies so they get too scared to even try to pivot because they don't even know what to pivot to they haven't even considered anything else that's what these people are doing these people are good at getting retweets they're good at um getting each other into like these little bs media jobs that aren't real journalism that aren't real reporting that's glorified blogging that is just part of this think piece industrial complex that it's just make work. It's make work for um, female and POC journalists. It's not real investigative reporting. It's not real source sourcing or whatever. It's just glorified Twitter threads and blog posts uh, that about culture, just BS culture stuff that doesn't scare white people and lets them look like they're being diverse. Yeah, so, yes, uh, 
Chris said you got to have a change up to go with your heater. Yeah, these people only had one tool and it works so far. But to them, the whole world is the internet. The whole world is is retweets, you know? So, so this is all they can do is just change.org, retweet, retweet. Hey, uh, blue check friends, um, spread this narrative. So that's what's funny about this thing. They all clearly coordinated. Let's go back. Look at all the language. It's all the same stuff. This is Dr. Avis, sister scholar. She's one of these people. Uh, same phrase. Al activist Alicia Garza says she heard nothing from Ice Cube after he agreed to work with her on a black agenda. This woman has been bad mouthing Ice Cube so badly and calling him out his name and calling him all types of stuff and uneducated and uncredentialed and whatever. And why would he listen to you? Like, like this Dr. Avis lady, I've seen her say all this stuff, like this, this arrogance of them, this, like the untalented 10th, like they just really believe that everybody should fall in line behind them. But it's only like white people who recognize them and the white people who recognize them, not even recognize them because they're twice as good as any other black person. They, rec they recognize them because they're unthreatening and they know that they value them. They know that these people value their validation and can be used. You know, that's all like you're pretty much there for. So uh, this idea that she could talk to Ice Cube anytime she wants, any way she wants, but she can then shame him to bring. Yeah. So, but notice they all have the same language. Like some memo came out. They all came out the same day. Like at least change the language, make an effort to, not look like you coordinated this that's what good leaks are like they make an effort to try to make it seem spontaneous that's what i'm saying it's kind of surprising when you kind of look at how these people work it's very surprising to realize just how amateurish um they really are and it's kind of biting them in the butt now because someone like biden is pretty old school he's not gonna it doesn't help him with a biden it doesn't help them with um a nice cube like like their ways but like like to give an example like uh using twitter was very good for promoting uh our show i got up to about twenty thousand followers on twitter and in the beginning like twitter was a great way to promote the show and i started realizing uh in the past couple of months tweeting all the time is getting me marginally less followers and i had to like realize this is a kind of waste of time it's just an addiction that I just spend time on where I argue with people most of the time. I got to start using it less because it's like I'm spending 80% of my time on there and it's getting me like 20% of my results, you know, whereas before it was getting me like a majority of um, my results. That's the conundrum these people are stuck in, in that it's the only tool they have in their toolbox. Uh, someone put this. You register interest, you shill a bit. You get asked to shill and make a little compromise. You get asked to shill and make a big one. Congrats, you've been invited to be a sellout. I agree with every word of this except the very last one. Um, they're not invited to be sellouts. They're invited to be buy-ins. And we got to start using that word. We have to stop calling everything a sellout because... To be a sellout, you have to have values to sell out in the first place. These people are buy-ins. They're invited to be a buy-in. Um, you had it's it's like when you're waiting for a new limited edition shoe to come out, and they're gonna drop the shoe on the internet, the Travis Scott um Air Maxes, whatever cliche um hype beast thing is going out, and you know, they give you a chance to buy it, to buy it. That's what these people are. They're not getting a chance to sell out. They're getting a chance to uh, buy in. So, yeah, these people are buy-ins. So, yeah, I agree with every, I agree with literally every word of this except for the very last word. Congrats, you get invited to be a buy-in. Um, yeah, so, yeah, you can't sell a soul you don't have. Yeah, you can't sell out when you have no uh, beliefs in the first place. And I think it's way too 
charitable to call these people um, sellouts. So, phone, I mean, got plug in. Okay, so we're going to talk about a couple of things. Let me retweet or on the air again. We're close to breaking 100 people. And again, your patronage and donations are always appreciated. Feel free to hit the super chat or hit us on Venmo at or Cash App at Champagne Sharks, one word, no underscore, or PayPal, Champagne Sharks at gmail.com. Um, always appreciated. So, anyway, I'm going to. Find something um, real quick. So this is what's interesting is that these people who have been tweeting and had this coordinated um, coordinated attack on Ice Cube for not for not um, reaching out to Alicia Garza. Meanwhile, they fail to mention that, A, Biden hasn't reached out to Alicia Garza either, but they can't make a big deal about that because, first off, they know they can't bully Biden. They're, they talk tough with other black people, especially black men. They use their inside voice with uh, white men, especially powerful white men. Like Elizabeth Warren, you know, she's like um, that white lady who's trying to look uh woke and you can like uh do a shakedown on her and loud talk her and then she'll like you know try to listen like biden doesn't care biden's old school he wouldn't even apologize for the crime bill to the congressional black caucus so he's not gonna he's not gonna you know so they're, they're using the inside voice with him the second thing is um ice cube hasn't been reached out to by biden as far as we know so i mean and not just that biden's transition is in turmoil right now they probably don't know that because i don't think they do real reporting i don't think they have any intellectual curiosity like like i'm sure i'm more kept up and versed on what's going on in that white house than a lot of these people yeah they everything is culture war and entertainment to them like you know they probably know all the new signings for hbo max shows with black showrunners and who's getting tapped for which jobs or Things like that, but I don't think they actually know any real world important news. Um, but hold on a second. This is what I found really, really insulting. I hope this looks like it's going to be too small. I know how the screen works, it doesn't always show well. Give me a second. I'm going to put this in large, but I want to show how Alicia Garza has been um, acting about this stuff because it's very interesting to take a look at. So just bear with me for a second. But I just want you to see like the audacity, like she is such a Karen. It's amazing. Like everyone knows that, well, not everyone, a lot of people don't know. Everyone, well, a lot of people know that she was raised by a white man, uh, and her name growing up was Alicia Schwartz. Her name growing up was Alicia Schwartz, and she went to like fancy schools in the Bay. She um, basically grew up around white people. Grew up with a white dad, and the way she talks to ice cube it really shows she talks one thing about white women with privilege they hate having to debase themselves to ask negroes especially the wrong kind of negro for anything but sometimes they have to and when they do like karen's um they do three steps 
first they get like indignant and sassy and nasty, you know, where they're asking you for the favor, but even when they're begging you, they're doing it with barely masked contempt. And they even ask, act like they're doing you a favor to allow you to do them a favor. When that doesn't work, then come out the tears and then the humility. When that doesn't work, then they get extra mad because now the first time it was bad enough to ask you for something, but to save face, they asked you with uh, derision and open condescension and acting like they're doing your favor. When that doesn't work, then they play victim and cry. When they have to be reduced to doing that, which is already a big loss for them, and they still don't get what they want, then they get extra mad because I'm like, like you, N-word, you made me um, reduce myself in a way that a white woman should never have to, especially to a black person. And you still said no. Now now comes the anger. She's, she's at stage one now. You know, like, um, if it gets bad enough and Ice Cube gets called into Biden and she's still not um, getting any access, she'll probably gonna get more humble and, you know, whatever. But right now she's at stage one where she's still being derisive, even as she's asking for the favor. And she's still like um, doing her condescending white lady uh, voice on him. The same one that we pointed out on the Roland Martin show. Yeah, I hope Biden calls Cube. Yeah, someone said I hope Biden calls Cube. Yeah, I hope so too. It'll just be so funny. Uh, so, so the right wing has a standing army. The libs have mercenaries. It's so true. Well, you know what? Oh, the old school libs like Biden. He has a standing army as well, uh, and mercenaries. Yeah, but Elizabeth Warren definitely had nothing but uh, mercenaries, but not even good mercenaries. Like, like she has like trash mercenaries. But uh, let's let me just pull up real quick. I have it already. I just wanted it in a way that was easy to see. So give me a second. I mean, I got way too much stuff open. Oh, hold on. Let me close out some stuff. Mm. Give me one second. In the meantime, share with me what you're all doing for um, Thanksgiving Day. Are y'all meeting with family? Are y'all traveling? What are y'all doing? Let me know as I figure out how to get this computer working. Okay, let's try this one more time. program that I need to show you this stuff, for some reason, it's not being recognized by StreamYard, which is why I'm stalling. So let's see if we can get it. Okay, we're going to try this one more time. until it works. But for the people who were mad at how condescending Alicia Garza was on Ice Cube's appearance on Roland Martin, y'all are going to love this. Y'all are going to love this. So first off, we talked about how Roland Martin was constantly... Oh, here we go. We talked about how Roland Martin was trying really hard to get um, Ice Cube 
and Ro and Alicia Garza to hang out. And what we asked is why? Why is he trying so hard to get them to hang out? What is he doing? And what I explained was he can't get his foot in the door either. Um, they want Ice Cube to get in there because he has at least gotten a response from them. And then once he's in there, he brings in Alicia Garza. Alicia Garza brings Roland Martin and all these other people in. So they're kind of trying to use him as a Trojan horse. But because they're so classist and because they suffer from such black misandry, even as they're trying to use him, they can't even play nice. They, it's taking all their effort to have to ask a nigger for this. Like, um, and it's what black men are to them. They, it's, it's tough. It's taking a lot out of them. And you're going to see it here. So, so Roland Martin is still on this. This is something that Roland Martin, um, tweeted out because Roland Martin is still trying to pressure Ice Cube to go in at Alicia Garza. And if you remember that show, that's all he basically wanted to talk to her about. He spent like two thirds of the time just saying, what about Alicia? Why don't you meet up with Alicia? You should meet up with Alicia. Alicia, 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 Alicia. You know, and then uh, Alicia's like, what about me? What about me? What about me? You know, and they want to talk about anything of uh, substance. They're beating this drum again because nothing else has been working. I showed a tweet where Roland Martin uh, announced uh, Biden We've shown how valuable we are. Invest in us. Invest in black media. He straight up begged Biden. Didn't work. So now they return to Ice Cube together. They've apparently, you can tell by all the people who came out at once, they've apparently coordinated this. You know, they said, hey, guys, what are we going to do now? Let's have the, the, the grifter powwow. You know, they all went to someone's DMs and they all got together. I'm sure the person who even wrote the BET article might have been in that thing. You know, um, that they're all that they're all quote tweeting to begin with. Somebody responded, dang, it wasn't that long ago. And meaning it wasn't that long ago you asked Ice Cube to help her out. So we have the least amount of patience for other black people. And he's basically saying, give him a chance. Like what are y'all what are y'all doing? You know, like um give him give him a chance. Like like why are you bugging him like this? And this guy said, this woman said, because we have the least amount of time to play with our vote and time. Um, and th that's an example of, like a wanna check. She's not, she's not a blue check, but she's acting invested and, you know, she's doing the blue check talking points, like whatever. And he says, votes are already in, Biden already won. The same people have been telling me to be patient with demands of Biden because he's not in office yet. So this guy points out a great hypocrisy. He's one of those rare blue checks that makes a lot of sense. He says, um, Biden won. The votes are already in, so there's nothing to bargain with. Why are all these black liberals telling me to be patient with Biden, who actually has power and who we voted for uh, because he's not in office yet, but Ice Cube? Uh, suddenly there's no patience for, uh, for him. And again, it's like I said before, because um, they're comfortable talking to Ice Cube like that. For all the talk about black patriarchy and how black um, men are the white people of black people, nothing evidences how much that's not true by how they act towards straight black men. Because if black men really were the white people of black people, they would be kissing their ass. And talking to them with that same inside voice that they can never somehow manage to find for for them. Um, so Alicia Garza responds like this. Alicia Garza responds with, this is a weird flex. We talked October 16. Now is the end of November. The moment of leverage passed. Now, what is she talking about here? What moment of leverage? You know, like... Um, you guys were shilling on spec. You guys gave somebody um, your vote and your endorsement. We're getting nothing in return. Now you're talking leverage. Like you needed to worry about leverage before you even committed to this man. Like these people just say anything and it never makes sense. They just throw in whatever uh, because they just care about um, winning arguments, but not actually being right. Uh, 
they care about how they look, but not actually um, discovering the truth and saying it. Um, it's not about patience. I never said be patient with Biden. Turn all the way up. Whatever. Trump has 50 something days to make good on that 50 billion. Be patient with that too or nah. First off, that's nothing to do with anything. Like, what is Trump making good in the 50 billion? First off, it's 500 billion, not 50. She typed it wrong. But why would Trump do it now? The whole reason Ice Cube wants to meet with both sides was so whoever won, they had some kind of promise for them. Like, Ice Cube's not dumb enough to think that even if Trump loses, he's going to give him anything. Like, like this is not even a smart argument. These these people, it's very uh, amazing to me how kind of childish they are, you know? But he goes, and rightly so, I wouldn't hold my breath on Trump, even if he would have won. But I don't think the moment has passed um, to create a plan or approve upon any existing to press and hold Biden to, you know, which is true. Like, there's plenty of time. But she knows this is when the jobs um, are going out. She doesn't really care about helping black people because if it was about helping black people, there's plenty of time to get measures and stuff in front of Biden. He hasn't actually gotten in office yet. But there's a limited amount of time to get jobs. It's jobs that she's upset about. That's the disconnect she's having with this guy. This guy's like Western Rush, but she can't just say, look, the jobs are running out. And someone, some other mascot or blue check is going to get uh, the Negro Whisperer job if I don't. Um, Black Lives Matter as the resident. Negro whispers of the Biden administration. Someone else is going to get that gig if we don't get in there now. That's the real rush. But because she can't say that, she has to just throw out all this um, babble. Like it's incoherent. It doesn't even make sense. It doesn't even address what he was um, talking about. <laughs> Trump finessed you, Cube. Please, please hire me. Yeah, like she's in, she's still in. Yeah, she's basically implying, like, that's what I'm saying, she can't withhold her contempt. She's still insulting him, even as she's she's trying to get him to do her a favor. Like, that's how, they, that's how they think of us. They can barely, they have more contempt for straight black men than even a lot of white people. It's, it's crazy. Yeah, and Jeffrey Corley nailed it. The longer she's out in the cold, the greater the chance someone new can come and take her spot. We need more people up in here. We need more likes. Um, if you got a Twitter, if you got a Facebook, share this link, man. Get people up in here. If you got a Twitch, host this on your Twitch. Yeah, because uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk some more, man. We're gonna we're gonna get into we're gonna get into this, and I I want more engagement up in here. Um. Yeah, and if you haven't, if you're not a follower and you're listening to this, hit that follow button, hit that bell icon, comment, like, share, subscribe. Because uh, I feel like we're dropping some knowledge, man. We're dropping chronology here, and I feel like I don't like the engagement, man. I'm gonna be honest. Yeah, like, comment, share, subscribe. Let's get let's get that up, because. Angela Davis at least knew when it was time to get out the limelight. She's not getting out the limelight. <laughs> Angela Davis is on the, you know. Let me, let me not get started on Angela Davis. She's 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 an elder. I, I'm not crazy about where she is right now, but no, she Angela Davis is in the limelight. She is um the elder statesman to these people right now. Um, but this is what Alicia Garza um said. She goes. Um, you know, like I do to the guy, the last thing he said is, you know, like I do, these politicians like staying in office just as much, if not more than getting in. So, you know, we have time to get this agenda, but he's still taking her at face value that she cares about black people. And this is what this is about, you know, but you know, what she cares about is the job. He goes, sure. I hear you. This is her. And what I also know is that my brother got used for a photo op and press. So she's still insulting him. 
my brother got used for a photo op and press. And what did you get used for? You didn't even get a photo op and press. Like, how dare you? You couldn't even get a freaking, like, you sent somebody nudes who wouldn't even um, give you a number. That's basically what you do. Like, like, a, like, like, you have no place to. That's a metaphor, by the way. I'm not saying she ever sent anybody news, but I'm saying like, I, as I complain, somebody got used uh, for sex, and you didn't even um, get a conversation, and you sent and you busted it open for them in in um, their inbox, like you know, like like come come on, like, and how was that a way to even get him on your side? You wouldn't talk like this to to white people you were trying to get put on with. Like, like this is how you think of and talk to living black men. Like, that's why these people can only deal with dead black men. And even then, it takes all their effort, I feel. Like, like even dead black men eventually piss them off, which is why when, when black, dead black men get too much shine, they have to try to find a, a black woman to change the... Um, yeah, someone said her news got got left on red. <laughs> yeah, she couldn't even get the the read receipt. You know what I mean? Yeah, the audacity, the audacity to say Ice Ice Cube got used as as the audacity. Um, someone said update the current tweet on the stream. Um, let's see. Oh, oh, it's not updated. You're right. Why is it not shown? Hold on a second. Let me see if I can update that. Thank you for that. Yeah, it's updated on my screen, but for some reason it wasn't. Let's see if it. Okay, here we go. Thank you for that. Yeah, for some reason it wasn't updating on the on the screen, so I had to uh, refresh it. Yeah, so this is what I was reading, and you can read for yourself what she said. You know, so she goes, "He could have," and this is what's so arrogant. She goes, "I'll," and what I also know is that my brother got used for a photo op and press. He could have been. He could keep pushing for that money, but it's been awful quiet. Like, why would I even respond to this? Like, why would I even bring you along with me? Like, you can't even act nice to me when you need me. When I haven't even put you on yet. Like, how are you going to be talking to me? And as like a grown man, to have somebody like half my age, this disrespectful to me. If I let you be disrespectful, this disrespectful to me, you're half my age. Who's going to respect me? I mean, I'm a guy that fired shots at all of NWA, uh, grown ass men with guns and street cred. And I'm going to let like this college girl, uh, half my age, who can't even fix her lips or talk to me with any respect publicly, you know, just disrespects me publicly and on the air. Into like my inner like, I don't even understand. Like, you know how deep in you the disrespect has to be to be this counter logical. Like she's being like, I'll be interested to see if she hits stage two of Karenness that I talked before, where she just starts uh, openly crying and begging and acting nice. And once you reject a Karen at stage one. You can't give in because even if they cry and act nice and do the crocodile tears, if you let them in and give them what they want, they will harbor that. They'll remember that you forced them to debase themselves to get what they want from you, and they will plot um, their revenge. They'll serve it cold if they have to. Like, she's burnt. He can't do anything with her. She's shown that she can't show him respect. And she's shown that 
And now, like, these little shots she's throwing, right, even as she's begging him, are her anger at being reduced to do this. And because she hates that she has been reduced to petitioning her inferior for this gig, she has to save face to a degree, especially to her followers, you know, who are like, uh, girl, you're not doing this, you know, for a black man, are you? You're not actually seriously begging. You know, she's got to show him, don't worry, I'm begging him, but I'm still better than him and I'm still putting him in his place. She said, that's that's kind of for her followers or for herself, you know? Yeah, so I think he's, I think he's uh, smart to keep ignoring her and... And I think she needs to use a little sugar and, you know, stop using vinegar to try to get him um, going. But, yeah, that that was pretty interesting to me. You know how and Roland Martin is still still begging to get in there. Um, yeah. And somebody said, oh, um, Ice Cube is in it for the money. That's why he did it. And it's like Ice Cube has albums ice cube has a movie production company if he wants money he can just do barbershop four or a new barbershop series barbershop or next generation you think you think he needs to do this for money you think he needs to do this for um clout but meanwhile those same people saying that will ignore that black lives matter the national organization has raised hundreds of millions of dollars and they have zero transparency because they're not, they're, a, they're not a nonprofit. If you're not a nonprofit, you're not obligated to be transparent. They haven't said where any of that money goes. So these people who this is their only gig, this is their only uh, hustle, who um, have already gotten hundreds of millions from it and have not shown where a fraction of it has gone. Those are the people who are not in this front of money. Okay. Yeah, he could do Honey, Are We There Yet? Seven. Like, he doesn't need this. He can do, like, Beauty Shop 3, Barbershop 5, and it'll get a certain amount of money, man. You know? Yeah, I, I, I like those movies, too, by the way. Um, They're all nice family entertainment. Yeah, so... Anyway, the blue checks are upset. The wanna checks are upset because they dream of being a blue check one day and they need the institution of blue checkery to be standing uh in order so it's a friday after thanksgiving yeah you can do you can do saturday you know um you can do friday after thanksgiving you can you can do you can do all this stuff like come on but that also kind of shows too to make the accusation kind of tells on yourself because if that's what your main go-to is that's how you th- that's how you think. You're projecting your own self onto him because that's what they would. That's what motivates them. So that's what what people accuse you of a lot of times is what they what people accuse you of a lot of times is what they themselves actually um, are guilty of doing. You know, um, that's their imagination. Like if that's the best thing that they could think of you possibly being motivated by doing is because that was their experience. That's that's uh, what they think about. Um, I want to talk about something else real quick. That took a little bit longer than, than I wanted, so I'm trying not to make these too long anymore, and I've already messed up on that front. Plus, I think we give away too much free content. So we are, I'm going to be like um, some of these other YouTube creators. I see these YouTube creators <laughs> straight up hold the stream hostage. Like, if we don't get likes, if we don't get likes, if we don't get shares, we're cutting it off early. I'm going to start doing that. I'm going to, I'm going to find, I'm going to find my inner grifter. Let's see. Oh, there's a lot of stuff I want to talk about, but I'm gonna put some of this. I'm gonna put some of this off. Um, what I wanted to talk about was this scene real quick. 
there's other stuff I'm going to talk to, but I don't want this to go uh, three hours. So Obama on the Breakfast Club. I thought this was pretty good. Obama was in the Breakfast Club, and this is what was said. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. More than five minutes without any likes, the stream ends. More than 15 minutes without any shares. Yeah, definitely if you're joining this, share the, share the stream. Let people go up in here. Um, let me know if the... Not the ride, you hear this? ride lifts all boats types of rhetoric. Because we all know black people's boat got a hole in it. So the systemic things that were done to black people to put us in... Let me know if y'all can hear it. Specific systemic things to get us out. So well, but, what, but what, what did I'm, you do what, 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 what I'm saying, Charlamagne, is black poverty dropped faster than everybody else. Black incomes went up more than a lot. Of so let me know real quick. Were you guys able to hear that? Okay, good. I'm going to start it over and enlarge it, but I just want to make sure people can hear it um, first. So here we go. I think people um, want to know, like, what did you do specifically for black people? Not the rising tide lifts all boats. And I got to say, man, New Black Media has been doing a good job at getting talking points into the ether. And one thing I'm going to say, I feel like, us in the alternative uh, black media, we've done a way better job at organically introducing talking points. There's a lot of things I see people say where I'm like, uh, that came from this um, black media creator. That came from this black media creator. These other people, they don't really have a bottom up um, talking point generation thing. They have a top down generation um talking point generating things so what happens is they are in the ears or are installed as mascots to so all these like white liberal editors and um nonprofit heads and um showrunners and stuff like that so they can get like people talking about intersectionality and black patriarchy and all that stuff at places like Washington Post and places where they edit at and all these places that have degenerated into glorified blogs, they can get stuff on that level, but they're losing influence. But not just that, the stuff that people like us talk about, it is what people on the ground really care about and think about. And over a long enough timeline, we may not get there as fast, but what we say, I've noticed, has always ended up um being forced to be addressed and then even those people who were not about it are forced to get about it like now you have alicia garza and all them talking about reparations or talking about uh amanda seals talking about no black agenda no vote like all this stuff uh because as usual they always have to see uh the waves and move their hands to try to fool people into that um uh, to pretend that they're controlling it. You know, they got to look over the shoulder and try to make sure that their hands are matching the way the waves are moving. But now they're getting waves that they don't even like, but they still have to, um, they have one or two choices. You know, these new waves crashing, you don't like the pattern, you don't like where the water's coming from, but the only other option is to stop moving your hands and reveal that you don't control the water. So they got to keep, um, doing it and that's what i like about seeing this because i feel like the fact that Charlemagne is saying the kind of stuff that we've been saying forever you know like it's kind of messing things up they put these black blue check class in there precisely to keep them from having to answer these type of questions about um race yeah i mean this is true see the god in his ilk they haven't internalized the ideas so they can't stand substantively address the question dodging but just the fact that it's even being thrown out there it's even forced to uh, be thrown out there that's a good sign that is a good sign i will take it i'll i'll take it it's not ideal but it's better than what was happening in 2016 where people like him had to 
be asking Hillary Clinton about intersectionality and a bunch of um, after school special um, race politics. You know, um, I'll take it. I'll, I'll take it. I'll, I'll say that uh, for now. For now, I'll take it. So let's keep going. Types of rhetoric. We all know black people's vote got a hole in it. So the systemic things that were done to black people to put up. See, and he's not used to getting things like this. And um, even Breakfast Club used to carry more more water for these people, you know. But um, and a lot of his book, if you look at a lot of language of his book, it's him being forced. And I want to say it's like black media. Like I have to give credit to the um, Bernie wing of the party, the radical white people, the tankies, the white leftists, the DSA types, they've been, he doesn't get like a free ride like he used to. And yeah, like these, these Negro whispers, they can't uh, beat a buffer class or run interference. Like, um, they used to be able to, because if they get too disconnected openly from what the regular black folk are saying, uh, they're going to show that they don't control, um, the waves. Like I said, us in these positions we need specific systemic things to get us out so well but what, but what, what, I'm, you do what, 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 what I'm saying Trevor made is black poverty dropped faster than everybody else black incomes went up more than a lot of other folks so and this is that's not true either um the wealth gap increased under Obama but that's another story you know the issue is sometimes we just didn't go around advertising that because once again, the goal here is to build coalitions where everybody is getting something so that they all. So basically what he said about what's this lift every boats thing, he just went right back to talking about lifting all boats. And also what politician, especially him who always treated his whole eight years as a never ending campaign, doesn't toot their own horn. Like, come on. I feel like they've got a stake in it. Um, but I'll make everyone feel like they have a stake in it. Why does everyone have to feel like they have a stake in something you do for black people? Like things are done for people all the time who are part of a constituency. And, you know, there's a lot of things that get done for people that I feel like I have no stake in. Like, like he didn't No, he didn't answer the question. He reinforced the criticism. Like, he said everyone has to feel like they have a stake in it. Um, uh, there's one of more than everyone's, but, you know, it was still a package deal, you know? A lot of my policies were targeted towards people most in need. Those folks are disproportionately African-American now. So he said, you know, the same thing. He's answered with the same thing he was asked about. Uh, it was the people most in need that just happen to be disproportionately African-Americans are again, still admitting what Charlamagne asked about that you were thinking in terms of everybody. There are some things that, for example, he's okay. stalling. Oh, wait, the sound, the sound, did the sound drop off? The sound cut off for me. Hold on guidelines so that okay, let's go. having uh, a civil rights division there are some things that for example us having uh, a civil rights division in the justice department what did the civil rights division do like what happened out of any of those um consent decrees that were ruled under eric holder and then his successor to go into all those um racist police departments like, if you read up on consent decrees, they're a whole lot of nothing. They're just like a show trial. They don't really do anything. The people who do get um, fired or whatever are usually pretty low level. And then they get rehired or reassigned somewhere else. There are some good articles. I think ProPublica, ProPublica had one about how toothless um, consent decrees are. But at the end of the day... Um, Trump doing no consent decrees under Jeff Sessions is, you know, not that much uh, worse in terms of tangible effects than uh, what happens under consent decrees. Like, consent decrees get announced, and a lot of times people lose track of them before they even, like, uh, finish, but they're very overrated. 
that actually took seriously civil rights and imposed con why does it keep cutting out the volume hold on max out like ferguson and imposed consent decrees on places took seriously civil rights and imposed consent decrees on places like ferguson this are pointless and people in ferguson are still suffering sentencing guidelines so that we didn't max out on sentencing for all nonviolent drug offenses again all nonviolent drug offenses so he's still saying the same thing he keeps saying all so basically you just do stuff for everybody and then hope that black people get disproportionate um benefit from it so he just answered Charlemagne's criticism by uh doubling down the same criticism that's how ingrained blacks on bottom whites on top um you can't do anything for black people that will change that mentality is he can't even pretend that he's doing something different even just to respond to the accusation but change the incentives so the prosecutors were judged not by how long of a sentence you got but did you get a proportional sentence was it a fair sentence and i have my theory about why at the end he was doing that because he always cared more about his white audience and white liberals than uh black people the new jim crow at that time it was a very popular topic and suddenly that new jim crow thing by uh, michelle wallace was something that a lot of those uh white liberals and hipsters were really into and i feel like he was riding that way for them not for particularly the black people um i there was a vice show on it and it's kind of hard to remember now because the way content always moves and the way trends always move and that's what influencers do they follow trends um it seems like a million years ago but that's kind of what i think that really was it was something that it was the first black lives matter thing happening a lot of white people were into um you know black rights and civil rights and new jim crow was the black thing in vogue but I also think, too, to a certain degree, a lot of that's to pacify the marijuana lobby. Even though those criminal laws uh, disproportionately affect black people and whatever, that does a lot to destigmatize weed as well. And I think even though white weed dealers and stuff were not getting penalized like black ones or whatever, by changing that, it reduces a lot of bad press for them, and it reduces a lot of stigma toward weed in general. So it's like, it's harder to get mad at white people becoming weed millionaires and weed billionaires if a lot is done to rectify the black people who suffered from it in the past. Because that's the main thing people always say whenever they see a story about a new white weed millionaire and white weed billionaire is, oh, um... You know, meanwhile, uh, the black dude who was selling a nickel bag, you know, is still in jail. But, you know, also, I think anything that helps destigmatize weed helps national legalization, you know? So something like this, I think that's another reason why white people like it, because um, a major overture that destigmatizes um we by retroactively decriminalizing it psychologically uh lubricates the process for a lot of people about the idea of what else can we do to destigmatize and make selling weed legal you, you know what i mean yeah so yeah so i i feel like if only black people cared about this topic we would not have gotten that so those kinds of changes that we made that's why i say there's a reason why the federal prison population dropped mm -hmm. it, by the way at the same time the crime also dropped right so we were able to show that you can have a smart strategy in terms of reducing now here's the other thing too Whenever people say black people, the first thing that people always say is um, 
crimin criminals. Now, I mean, it's nice. I think prison justice reform is important. And I think it disproportionately helps black people. And it's something that definitely has to be done. But the beginning and end of black concerns can't be criminal justice. Because at the end of the day, there's a lot of black people who don't get arrested, never get arrested, um, suffering from a lot of workplace and school discrimination and being locked out of opportunities and stuff like it's um like like i just hate that that is the beginning and end of what he can what he can talk about you know hey 110b2 how you feeling oh yeah we got some more people up in here nice nice um yeah yeah so i mean yeah found that I found that interesting. I found that great that um, it's becoming normal to question him about stuff like that. Like, I mean, there are a lot of people who are mad at Charlemagne for that, but there was a time where Charlemagne would not have been able to uh, do that. Um, so that's that's really good. Reminder, hit the super chat if you're enjoying the stream or feel free to donate to us, donate to us an alternative ways you know um yeah but yeah giving as a policy action exclusively to black people even then it's never exclusively he even said it in his words he said um we did it for all federal prisoners and disproportionately was more black but they would never say you know we have to get less black people out of jail he won't say that you know they have to um yeah this is interesting i can't um double check this but i would love to know more about this the only legislation that the congressional black caucus has pushed in the past two decades have almost all been for pharmaceutical companies yeah i believe that and you know in general if anyone has interesting stories that y'all want to share send to champagne sharks at gmail.com because i would definitely like to um read more about that so yeah, I mean that's that's pretty much it for now. Um don't want to go too long and we're right at one hour and forty five minutes. Plus um yeah, this is oh hey K Swiftly, how you feeling? Always a pleasure when case in K Swiftly pops through. Yeah. Whew. K Swiftly is good people. We got to have her on soon. But if you don't follow K Swiftly on Twitch, follow her on Twitch. I think she gave us a raid. I think that's why we have uh, more people up in here. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, that's enough for today. And as usual, if you guys uh, like what we do, tell your friends. Um, trying to get by beginning of 2021, we should have five digit YouTube followers. So we're going to push for that big time. Uh, so yeah, share, 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 get your friends to like, subscribe. If you're watching this, subscribe, hit the bell notification. If you uh, enjoy what we do, uh, hit the super chat, donate to us at Venmo or Cash App. You know, it all goes back into the show. So yeah, definitely, definitely um, do that. We want to get everyone on the show ring lights and shock mounts like this. So Invest in the show, invest in us for the price of a cup of coffee a day. Uh, you too can support a poor podcaster. Yeah, so uh, take care, y'all. Be good. Uh, we fall behind on the regular podcast, but we're going to catch up. So don't worry about that for people who have been checking for the regular podcast. All right. Just take care of yourselves and stay safe out there. Enjoy your Thanksgivings.